We're going to talk about these things today. Uh, it says it's a uh, RF bridge. I've talked about bridges in other uh, videos. Um, I don't know if I've actually shown this bridge or not. I doubt it because, uh, well, we'll get to that. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a bridge. So what is the bridge able to do? It lets you measure uh, return loss or VSWR of antennas and stuff. And so I want to use this with my new spectrum analyzer. So um, let's uh, let's take a look at this. It says it's a bridge. And um, so if you're used to bridges in electrical circuits, bridges look like this. It's it's uh, this square and you you put some uh, current through this device and if everything is balanced then you'll get you'll get no difference between these two nodes right these this is all be balanced and so um, if you have 50 ohms 50 ohms 50 ohms and 50 ohms then everything is balanced but let's say this is 51 ohms okay sorry you can't read my writing but let's say this is 51 ohms then uh, there'll be more current going through this side than this side because this is a little bit higher resistance and you'll get a difference of voltage across here or a difference in current if you look at that. Um, but you'll get a difference if you put like, a lot of times you'll see, you'll see uh, uh, a little meter uh, in the middle of the bridge uh, that, that's, that's doing the, 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 the measurement of the balancing of this bridge, okay? Well, that doesn't look like a bridge. Um, so let's, let's redraw this though, okay? Because the, the shape is the thing that's throwing you off, okay? So there's also these connectors, right? So we're, we're, you got four connectors and where do you put four connectors on this thing, right? So um, we're gonna redraw it like this, okay? So, so this thing is actually, it looks like this where this is 50 ohms and this is 50 ohms, okay? And so there's a bridge. And um, the dot is in one part of the bridge, that this is the dot, the device under test, and this is the reference, the ref, okay? So if you put uh, 50 ohms on that connector and you put 50 ohms on that connector, now you'll have a balanced bridge, okay? So uh, we, if we're gonna use one of these devices, you always have to put on a 50 ohm load on one of them, okay? So your ref always needs a 50 ohm load. You can get this out of your VNA kit or whatever, but it's a little 50 ohm load. So now I've, I've replaced this with 50 ohms. Now I have 50, 50, 50, and now I have a dot. So I'm gonna put an antenna here, and if the antenna has an impedance of 50 ohms, it'll be balanced, which means it'll have a good VSWR. And if it has 100 ohms, then it'll have a VSWR of two, two to one, instead of one to one. And so um, that's the way we're gonna use this thing. Now, uh, at the top is where we inject the current into the bridge and that's our input. Okay, so this is the input, right? So this is, this is the input and here's our two things in the bridge, okay? But we need, we need the meter in the middle, remember? We have this little meter over here. How do, how do we measure a difference here, okay? We need, we need some way of measuring that. And so what we're gonna do on the next page Uh, we are going to uh, take these two points and we're going to put it to a different connector, okay? That's the out output connector down, down here, so now we have this, right? Um, and we don't want this having a bunch of RF noise and everything. Um, we want it to uh, look at just the, just the imbalance, and so by choking off the uh, RF here, it helps with the whole thing, okay? And they do that by having a bunch of ferrites here. So this ferrite acts as a big choke. It gets rid of all the common mode that is just inherent. And then if there's anything that's differential, that's what we're interested in. So anything that's common, we get rid of. Anything differential still makes it through. And we're gonna measure, put this on the, on the output, okay? So, uh, I did that, I hooked it up, and it didn't work. And I scratched my head and I said, oh, well, don't, I didn't remember how to wire it up, you know, the input and the output and stuff. And I tried it again and it, it, it didn't work. And I, I, I was going crazy, okay? And I found out that mine was defective, okay? And everybody who's bought one of these, <laughs> I think it's gonna be hit or miss whether they got a good one or a bad one because this manufacturer, the PC board layout is wrong. And so every single one of these they have built 
is incorrect and won't work. Okay, so let me change lenses and I'll show you exactly what's wrong with mine. And it may be exactly what's wrong with yours. And, and you may have had the same problem. It's like, why doesn't my bridge work? Am I, am I dumb? <laughs> so yeah, let me change the lens. All right, uh, so yeah, here's all these ferrites and uh, they're, they're a little bit of coaxes in, this, in these uh, Pignos uh, ferrites that come out to this connector. Um, there's a little section here that in the original design was actually a, uh, a attenuator pad. Um, and this one just has a zero ohm resistor. Um, on my system, it doesn't seem to matter whether you put in a, ten, uh, a pad here or not. If, if you still want the pad, they, they just didn't load them in. Uh, I'll show the original schematic and you can solder those parts on if you want. Um, or you can just put in a SMA pad here. It would do the same thing. I tried an external pad. It doesn't seem to matter, so I don't think, it, I don't think it's necessary. Okay, so the error was at the front. Uh, let's see here at the front. And let me get something to point with. All right. So um, I showed in my uh, circuit, there's a 50 ohm, 50 ohm. Well, and there's only two resistors, but here's four resistors. Well, what it is, is this is 100 ohms and 100 ohms in parallel. And this is 100 ohms and 100 ohms in parallel. So this is, this is the 50 ohm in one side of the bridge. And this is the 50 ohms on the other side of the bridge. And uh, there is a, a trace that puts these together and a trace that puts these together. And guess what? There should be a trace to put these together and there should be a trace to put these together, but there isn't. Um, and so there was, there was, the circuit was completely wrong and, and it was failed from the start. So um, I've put a little jumper here, a, a little piece of wire, soldered it on, another little piece of wire over here, soldered it on. So you can test this, um, put a voltmeter here and here and measure the resistance from here to here. It should be a dead short. And from here to here, it should be a dead short. And uh, if it's not, you've got a bad, you know, if the resistance goes up and over and down, you get like 200 ohms or something, 150 ohms, because there's some other stuff in here as well. Um, you, yours is bad. You, it should be a dead short from, from here to here and a dead short from here to here. And then from here to here, it should be 50 ohms. So just check it out with a voltmeter. So anyway, once I put that wire there and that wire there, now my thing works. The other thing that I changed a little bit, which I don't think matters much anymore either, is uh, this particular coax uh, had its inner core and outer core shorted together on both ends. And the original schematic just had the center conductor floating. I don't think it really matters so much. Um, I just decided to make it like the original schematic and I cut mine and I have it floating as well. Okay. So um, let me see, I'll put a picture here of the original circuit so you can stare at it and see what, uh, what it was originally like. I'm sorry, this is the only copy I could find of the original, of the original schematic and it isn't, isn't the greatest in the world. Um, and the company, uh, this uh, transverters, the guy must have had a medical condition or something. Anyway, he's closed his store down and all of his documents are gone. And anyway, I can't, I can't uh, get to the original source anymore. Uh, I just had to find something online. So anyway, uh, yeah, let's hook this thing up and uh, give it a try. So in order to use this thing, you need a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. And so our a source is going to go into the input. So this is the tracking generator source. It's going to go onto the top of the bridge. This is the input room. Our bridge kind of goes like this. So we're going to put our tracking generator into the input pin. We're going to put the other part of our spectrum analyzer uh, to the output uh, over here. Uh, we are going to have a reference uh, loaded with 50 ohm load. So we have 50 ohms on our reference connector. Now we can put our antenna or our device under test on, on this. So I'm going to uh, stick it over here so we can kind of get things in the right orientation. So I've just put it in a, a vise here and that connector is gonna go up so I can screw in an antenna. Um, all right, so let's get things organized here so I can show you what's going on. Okay, on this analyzer, it has a reflection mode. So you can hit um, mode and then there's a, a, a 
selection for reflection. We're going to hit reflection and then we get a reflection that's going to measure return loss and things like that and, and VSWR. And we need to calibrate it though, right? Just like our, our nano VNA, we need to calibrate. And what we want is right now we have an open and an open should give us exactly uh, zero dB of return loss or infinite uh, VSWR, okay? So the way that you calibrate this on my instrument is that you, oops, sorry, you press the uh, measure setup. It, it, this thing here for calibration, you hit calibration. We can do an open calibration, enter, and it's gonna do the calibration. And now we have a straight line at zero dB, okay? It shows us that our return loss is zero dB and our VSWR is lots of numbers. <laughs> very, very large, infinity, right? VSWR should be infinity right now. All right, so uh, we're going to be testing a, uh, an antenna here, uh, and we will screw that onto the uh, bridge. Oh, let's just stick that right there. Okay, so now we have a, a device to test, and we'll come back over here, and uh, there we go. Uh, we've got some resonances. I have some markers already set. Uh, this marker is at 145.45 megahertz, and that marker is at 430 megahertz. And so we have a VSWR of 1.8 over here and a VSWR of 1.2 over here. Um, so that's the way you do it. Um, uh, a Rigel will sell you a fancy uh, bridge that you can buy from them for a bazillion dollars, or you can get one of these little RF bridges for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something on, on eBay. Um, but make sure that yours is built correctly. Um, like I said, I had to add a couple jumpers on mine. Uh, then once I put the jumpers in, uh, yeah, it works, uh, works really good.